I know there's been national news over the past weeks about how bills are shaping up in the state legislature that could severely harm Harris County. And I wanted to talk to folks today because I want to make sure that people in Harris County know what's happening and that those around the state understand how these bills are going to impact them because they will. First, obviously for context, the importance of Harris County, not just for the almost 5 million people who call Harris County home, but also for all Texans. Harris County has 4.7 million residents, 16% of the state's population. We're larger than 25 states in population. Our economy contains more than 160,000 employers, headquarters of 25 Fortune 500 companies. Close to one-fifth of Texans rely on Harris County's economy for jobs in energy, healthcare, construction, other industries. We've got an important port, as you all know. Harris County substantially contributed to, Harris County, to Texas having the fastest GDP growth in the U.S. last year. Some in the Texas legislature are declaring war on this, the most populous and the most generative county in the state. And what they seem not to realize is that it's not just a murder plot against residents in Harris County. It's a murder-suicide plot that conspires against residents in all of Texas. Dozens of bills have been filed this legislative session specifically seeking to harm Harris County, the engine of growth and opportunity for Texas that Harris County represents. Most specifically, I want to highlight four election bills that egregiously threaten the voting rights of Harris County constituents and ultimately of Texans. Now, these are not the only ones, but I don't want to go too long. Two of these bills were written only for Harris County. They're written to apply to Texas counties over 2.7 million people, over 3.5 million people respectively, of which there's only one, and that is Harris County. If the state legislature gets a free pass in doing this, they will only continue. Some of those bills that don't pass this session may pass at the next session, can return in future sessions whether they're seeking to overturn elections, whether they're seeking to take over life-saving departments, where does it stop? That any decisions made in a county they don't like need to go through the Republican-controlled legislature? That they can overturn elections in any county? If this is allowed to happen in Texas, the model is gonna be copied by other states as well. I can't think of something more anti-democratic. Now let me talk about the first of the four bills I'm going to cover. It's SB 1993. This bill, it's right now it's in the House, it would allow the Secretary of State to order a new election if they have, quote, good cause to believe that at least 2% of the total number of polling places in the county, and that's the quote, ran out of usable ballots and did not receive supplemental ballots within the hour. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but in practice, a single individual, the Secretary of State, who is appointed by the governor, would have the discretion to overturn the results of elections in Harris County over mere accusations. Specifically, if SB 1993 had been in effect in 2022, these past elections, it could have been a disaster for Harris County, could have had the elections overturned. There were allegations these past elections about delays in the refill of ballot paper. It's come to light in a Houston Chronicle expose that the allegations were severely exaggerated. Every county has hiccups running elections, especially a county with 5 million people and in our state, which has made it harder to run elections. This bill allows a single official appointed by the governor to unilaterally decide, even based on false allegations that are later disproven, that he wants to overturn the elections in Harris County. Senate Bill 1750 is another one. That bill, for the first time in recent memory, would have the state legislature abolish a statutorily created office at the local level. Nine out of the ten largest counties in Texas have that office, elections administrator, and research shows that having an elections administrator improves public trust in elections and makes elections more efficient. 
Over the past legislative session, couple legislative sessions, laws have been passed to make it harder for us to conduct our elections. In the face of those challenges, we've created the Elections Administrator's Office, which, as I mentioned, um, has helped us move through those hurdles and conduct elections efficiently. The next one is Senate Bill 1933. It would take autonomy away from local governments writ large over how to run their own elections and instead hand control over to, again, the appointed Secretary of State uh, by giving him or her, at this point him, the power not only to observe and report on a county's elections activities, but also to approve all election policies and procedures and even direct the termination of the county's elections administrator. SB, 9, SB 1039 is the last one I'm going to cover. It would allow certain individuals to jumpstart a very burdensome administrative process in Harris County if they feel there were, quote, election irregularities. Now, obviously, with the amount of false tales of election irregularities peddled in recent years, that bill would seek to burden our local administrative offices. It would allow disgruntled uh, folks disgruntled by election results to swarm our election offices and overburden our elections administrators. So candidates, um, party chairs, presiding judges, alternate judges, of which there are hundreds, would be able to challenge this. And, and, and the Secretary of State could, in their sole discretion and without conducting an audit, determine that a violation has occurred and even appoint a conservator to oversee elections. These bills are being considered as we speak. Overall, they're a political maneuver. They're something that all Harris County residents and all Texans should know about. They're designed to give one party a leg up in our elections. The bills will change, some will pass in the coming days, but what I want is for everyone to know the kinds of attacks, the kinds of attacks on the rights of Texans and on democratic ideals that are being considered right now. This is not normal. These are not the kinds of bills that legislatures should be considering to build a stronger and more resilient democracy. They do not represent our values. They do not represent the values of local control and the strength of local government. And they are not designed to enhance the integrity of the system. In fact, they undermine the integrity of the system because they are an abuse of the system. Whether individually or taken together, these attempts to subvert the authority of Harris County and with it attacks on all counties and all cities in our state represents the disenfranchisement of millions of local voters whose voices will be silenced. I'm going to repeat my remarks in Spanish. Sé que han habido mm, noticias a nivel nacional en las últimas semanas acerca de los proyectos de ley que se están desarrollando en el condado Harris, en la, en, que se están desarrollando acerca del condado Harris en la legislatura estatal. Quiero asegurarme que todos en nuestro condado y a nivel estatal sepan lo que está sucediendo y que entiendan también los residentes de nuestro estado de Texas cómo les afecta esto a ellos también. Obviamente, para poner todo en contexto, el condado Harris tiene casi 5 millones de residentes. Es eh, el, el condado más grande del estado, mayor en población que 25 estados americanos. La economía del condado Harris contiene más de 160 mil empleadores. Tiene 25 de las 500 compañías, de las compañías Fortune 500. Un quinto de los tejanos dependen en la economía del condado de Harris eh, para sus trabajos en energía, en salud, en construcción, aún más tenemos un puerto enorme, contribuimos sustancialmente a que Texas tuviera el crecimiento del PIB más rápido en los Estados Unidos el año pasado. Algunos en la legislatura estatal están básicamente declarando guerra hacia el condado Harris y así declarando guerra en contra de este enorme fuente de desarrollo económico que es el condado Harris. Lo que parece que no se dan cuenta es que no solo es un complot de asesinato contra los residentes del condado Harris, es un complot de asesinato suicidio que conspira contra todos los tejanos. Hay docenas de proyectos de leyes que ya han estado evaluando esta sesión legislativa. Han intentado controlar los departamentos del condado que ofrecen servicios básicos a 5 millones de residentes. Han trabajado para hacer casi imposible que colectemos nosotros los fondos que necesitamos para llevar a cabo las actividades necesarias del condado. 
ya ha pasado un proyecto de ley en ambas cámaras de la legislatura que podría interpretarse en remover la autoridad que tienen tanto ciudades como condados para regular, por ejemplo, negocios a nivel local, la agricultura, etc. Específicamente quiero hablar de cuatro proyectos de ley acerca de, los de las elecciones que amenazan los derechos de los votantes en el condado Harris y finalmente a los tejanos. Dos de estos proyectos de ley se escribieron solamente para el condado Harris. Hay uno que, se enfrenta, que, que específicamente aplica, se aplica en condados de más de 2.7 residentes, otro que aplica simplemente para condados de más de 3.5 millones de residentes. Obviamente en el, en el estado de Texas solo hay un condado más grande y es el condado Harris. Si la legislatura se le permite hacer esto, ¿dónde se detienen? en que va, cuando pase alguna nueva política en un condado con el cual no están de acuerdo, simplemente ellos eliminan lo que ha sucedido, sea el condado Harris, sea otro condado. Déjenme hablar entonces de, de estos proyectos de ley y la idea es que son modelos que pueden usar a nivel nacional también, como ya se ha visto. Un proyecto de ley es la, el, el proyecto de ley del Senado, eh, 1993. Este proyecto de ley permitiría que el secretario de Estado ordenara una nueva elección en nuestro condado Harris, si es que tiene causa de creer que el número de sedes de votación en el condado, un 2% de las sedes de votación del condado, se quedó sin papeletas de votación. Entonces, esto suena de repente lógico, pero no lo es. En práctica, un solo individuo, el secretario de Estado, quien el, el gobernador nombra individualmente, podría cambiar el resultado de las elecciones, negar el resultado de las elecciones en el condado Harris. Esto podría haber sucedido en el 2022. En el 2022 hubo muchísimo ruido de que se quedaron las sedes de votación sin eh, papeles de votación. Ah, luego el Houston Chronicle hizo una investigación, descubrió que habían exageraciones enormes. Entonces, con esta ley, el secretario de Estado podría, simplemente basado en exageraciones, eliminar los resultados de una elección. El proyecto de ley 1750 del Senado permitiría por primera vez en memoria reciente que la legislatura eliminara, aboliera una oficina creada por ley a nivel local. Esa sería la oficina del administrador del condado, del administrador de elecciones. Nueve de los diez condados más grandes en el estado tienen administrador de elecciones y los legisladores quieren eliminar el nuestro. El proyecto de ley 1933 del Senado eliminaría la autonomía de los gobiernos locales, no solo el condado Harris, en administrar las elecciones. Le permitiría al secretario de Estado, nuevamente nombrado por el gobernador Abbott, manejar cómo nosotros llevamos a cabo nuestras elecciones, observar, reportar, pero también aprobar todas las políticas electorales, inclusive ordenar el despido del de administrador electoral. Finalmente, el proyecto de ley del Senado 1039 permitiría que ciertos individuos empezaran un, un proceso muy complicado administrativo para así crear trabajo, problemas en nuestra oficina de elecciones, si es que ven ellos eh, irregular, irregularidades electorales. Como saben, hayan habido en los últimos años muchísimas acusaciones de irregularidades electorales, la mayoría falsas. Entonces, cualquier candidato jefe de precintos, básicamente cientos de personas en el condado Harris podrían decir que hubieron irregularidades, aun cuando no las han habido, y así eh, llevar mm, bastantes problemas en nuestra propia oficina. Igual el secretario de Estado podría inclusive nombrar un conservador, no sabemos qué significa eso, no lo explican en la ley, pero probablemente alguien que controlaría, controlaría nuestras elecciones. Entonces, finalmente, esto es una maniobra política. Están atacando no solo a los residentes del condado, sino a los tejanos. Estos eh, proyectos de ley se están considerando ya mismo, mientras hablamos, van a seguir siendo considerados en los próximos días. Algunos cambiarán, algunos pasarán, algunos no. Pero quiero que todos sepan el tipo de ataques en los derechos de los tejanos, en los derechos ideales democráticos, los ideales de gobierno local, de la importancia de la libertad, eh, que se están atacando a nivel estatal. Esto no es normal. Esto no es algo que debería estar sucediendo en esta democracia. Esto no representa nuestras, nuestros valores. No estos, estos, estos eh, proyectos de ley no están diseñados para incrementar la integridad del sistema, de hecho, están lastimando la integridad del sistema porque son un abuso del sistema. Estos um, intentos 
de limitar la autoridad del condado Harris, de atacar todas las ciudades y todos los condados en este estado, representa el subvertir las voces de millones de votantes locales a través de todo el estado de Texas. Um, I'll take any questions. Uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Obviously, we're in communication with the county attorney's office, um, but these are all very, very challenging bills. Um, they threaten the integrity of our elections. Right now, we need to watch and see what passes and what doesn't, and it's my hope that these legislators will realize that they're not only harming their political aspirations because elections around the country have shown us voters don't want to see this kind of extreme policy, but they're harming their own constituents and they're harming their own state in the process. So my hope is um, that, that these won't make it, that, that folks will realize what a, what a problem this is. And if they do, we'll fight tooth and nail. And um, basically the only recourse we'll have is probably the courts. But I don't want to get into details without the county attorney here um, because I, I don't know. I don't know certainly the details. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that part of the problem with that bill is how vague it is. It could be read to basically eliminate the ability of cities and counties to pass any kind of local policies um, for ur urban areas, you know, anything on uh, regulating businesses, um, how things, basically maintaining the stability of a city, of a county for rural areas, regulating agriculture, um, important decisions that need to be made. But half of the problem is the bill's not clear. The bill's not clear. And so at worst, that's what it could be. Um, at best, it's posturing, um, but you know, basically, they, they, it also allows pretty much any individual to sue uh, a city or a county. And so, one thing we do know is it can create huge administrative burdens for for localities. Okay. All right, so, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.